Trees and their products have played a very important role in the development of Kentucky. Today we continue to depend on trees to produce the products that improve the quality of our lives. Kentucky's forest lands cover 12.7 million acres, just over 50% of the total land area of the Commonwealth. Kentucky's timberlands support extensive tracts of hardwood forests, dominated by oak, hickory, maple, beech, and yellow poplar, all which are used extensively in the forest industry. The resource of timber makes Kentucky one of the nation's largest producers of fine hardwoods. Being able to identify trees will hopefully make a visit to a forest more enjoyable by appreciating the individual beauty in Kentucky's forest trees. This knowledge will provide a better understanding of the usefulness and value of Kentucky's timber and to understand how the forests of Kentucky benefit the economy. Trees, like people, have identifiable characteristics that help in making each species of tree an individual. Just like people have different clothing choices, trees have differences in bark patterns and textures. Also, like individual people, trees will normally be found in specific locations. Some species, such as sycamore, can be assured of being found along creek beds and streams, while others, such as oaks, are found along drier slopes. Kentucky's trees can be divided into two broad categories, broad-leaved and conifers. The conifers of Kentucky can be identified as either needle-like or scale-like leaves. The eastern red cedar foliage has the unique scale-like growth, gray-green in color with the juvenile growth being very spiky. The leaf itself is only about one-sixteenth of an inch long. Two representative conifers with needle-like leaves are eastern white pine and Virginia pine. By looking closely at these two pines, you will note that the needles grow in bunches, technically referred to as fascicles. Close examination of white pine will reveal five needles per fascicle. The length of the needles are usually three to five inches. Examining Virginia pine will reveal two needles per fascicle. The needles average two inches in length and are twisted the entire length. The color is yellowish green. The broad-leafed trees of Kentucky are the most numerous type. These are the trees that are commonly referred to as hardwoods, and examples would be those of maples, oaks, and sassafras. Leaves are used most commonly to aid in the ID of broad-leafed trees, so understanding the individual parts of the leaf will help. The edges of the leaf are referred to as the margins. The top of the leaf is the apex and the bottom the base. The leaf is attached to the twig by the petiole. The veins are the structural units of the leaf, joining the petiole with the primary vein. Carefully observe the twig and leaf arrangement. One of two arrangements will be noted. If the base of the leaves are attached at the same height and one on each side of the twig, paired, they're referred to as opposite. The leaf arrangement is referred to as alternate when the leaves are staggered or not opposite on the stem. Several additional leaf characteristics need to be observed aiding in identification. The overall shape of the leaf provides a clue. Examples of extreme shapes would be the lancelate shape of the willow and the heart shape of the redbud. Examination of the edge of the leaf, or margin, is another characteristic used in identifying forest trees. Leaves can have smooth margins as found on the redbud or the small toothed margins that can be found on the elm. Broad leaf trees are grouped according to the number of blades that are attached to a common petiole. Many of the trees have a simple leaf blade on a petiole, thus referred to as a simple leaf. If the leaf is made up of more than one blade, the leaf is referred to as compound, with each blade referred to as a leaflet. When the leaflets are attached at a central point, the leaf is referred to as palmately compound, much like looking at the palm of your hand, with the fingers radiating from the palm. Your fingers would be referred to as the leaflets, and the total hand, the leaf. When the leaves are attached opposite along the primary vein of the leaf, the leaf is now referred to as being pinnately compound. 
American beech is a simple leaf up to six inches in length, usually a yellowish green in color. The leaf is arranged on a twig in an alternate pattern with a toothed margin. The veins of the leaf are extremely parallel, radiating from the primary vein. The black willow is a simple leaf growing up to six inches, an extremely narrow shape that is referred to as lancelate. The upper surface of the leaf is light green in color. The margins are serrated. Dogwood, or the flowering dogwood because of the large white showy flower found on the tree early in the spring, is one of the few forest trees whose leaf and twig arrangement is opposite. The leaf is between three and five inches in length, yellowish green in color with an entire smooth margin. The overall shape of the leaf is elliptical, widest at the center. Note that the secondary veins radiating from the primary vein eventually follow the outer edge of the leaf and follow it to the apex. Two elms are usually recognized in Kentucky's woodlands as timber trees, the American and the slippery elm. Both of them are very similar they have simple leaves approximately three to seven inches long with an alternate leaf and twig arrangement. The leaf margin is referred to as doubly serrated. The edges look much like that of the teeth on a saw. The leaf shape is oblong with a very identifiable characteristic at the base of the leaf blade. The blades of the leaf do not meet evenly at the base of the petiole. Another very characteristic segment of the leaf is the upper surface of the leaf. Rubbing your fingers across the surface will detect a rough surfaced sandpapery texture. That of the slippery elm will be coarser than the American elm. Note also that the secondary veins of the elms are extremely parallel on the leaf surface. Four members of the magnolia family grow in the forests of Kentucky. Two are easily identified by the sheer size of the simple leaf on the trees. They're the big leaf and the umbrella magnolia. Both of the tree's leaves are alternate in arrangement with entire smooth margins. The length of the big leaf magnolia is between 20 and 30 inches. That of the umbrella magnolia is 18 to 20 inches. With leaves of this size, it's difficult to confuse with other tree leaves. The way to identify between the two species of big leaf and umbrella magnolia is by the base of the leaf. The big leaf magnolia has a base that forms ear lobes. The umbrella magnolia has a typical acute base, and the identifiable bases separate the two species easily. The red and sugar maple are also two species that are similar in size and shape, but after close examination can be easily identified as separate species. First, both the sugar and red maple have opposite branching and leaf arrangement. Both are roughly six inches in size, and normally the sugar maple will be the larger of the two. The two maple shapes are referred to as lobed. Sugar maple has five lobes with each of the sinuses forming a U, while red maple has three lobes and sinuses that form a V. The margins of the sugar maple lobes are entire, and red maple being serrated. A final characteristic that will help in knowing the difference between the two is the color. Sugar maple will normally be a very dark green on the upper surface, red maple light green. Oaks, as a group, represent the most important of the hardwoods in Kentucky's forests. They provide a diversity of products such as flooring, furniture, and veneer. The fruit of the oak, acorns, provide a wide variety of wildlife of valuable food for the winter months. Oaks are also one of the most numerous of species of trees found in Kentucky. Oaks are separated into two groups, the red oaks and the white oaks. All of the oak leaves are simple and arranged alternately on the twigs. Generally, the white oaks will have leaves with rounded lobes and the red oaks will have lobes that are pointed. The white oak has an entire leaf margin with seven to nine lobes. The total length averages between five and nine inches. The upper surface color is bright green. The northern red oak is roughly five to nine inches in overall length. The margins are entire with lobes having the pointed tips. The upper surface coloring of the northern red oak is shiny green. 
Redbud is not an important forest tree species for timber, but a very familiar tree associated with Kentucky's forests. The redbud is easily identified by its heart-shaped leaf with an entire margin. The leaves are alternate on the twigs and are very dark green on the upper surface. Normally, redbud attains a size of five inches. Sassafras is a tree enjoyed by all learning tree identification because of the unique leaf shapes. Sassafras leaf arrangement on the leaf is alternating with all the leaves approximately five inches in size. There are three leaf shapes on any one sassafras tree. A simple unlobed leaf, two lobed leaves, and a third shaped leaf having three lobes. Most people use the term mitten shaped when referring to the three leaf shapes of sassafras. All of the leaves of the sassafras have entire leaf margins. Sourwood, although not an important timber tree, has flowers that are very valuable for honey production. Sourwood has a simple alternating leaf arrangement with a leaf margin that is finely serrated. The overall length of the leaf is four to seven inches in length. The leaf is elliptical in shape and shiny yellow-green in color. A unique characteristic that can be used in identifying sourwood is on the underside of the leaf. Fold the leaf in half along the main vein with the top to the inside. Very small hairs will be noted growing along the underside of the main vein. Sweet gum is an easily identified leaf because of the general shape. The shape is referred to as star-shaped. Sweet gum is a simple leaf with five lobes arranged palmately and serrated along the margins. The leaf is approximately three to five inches long. Sycamore is a tree normally growing along a water course where you can spot them quickly by the peeling bark that reveals the wider underbark. The leaf is oval in shape and approximately five to eight inches in size, arranged alternately on the stem. There are three to five lobes to the leaf arranged palmately. The margins have a very large serrated edges, referred to as a toothed margin. The upper surface of the leaf is pale green in color with an underside that is paler and hairy along the veins. Yellow poplar, also referred to as the tulip poplar or tulip tree, is a very valuable tree to Kentucky. The wood is used extensively in the furniture industry because of its abundance and ease of working ability. The shape of the leaf gives it the name tulip poplar. The leaf looks like that of the profile of a tulip. There are four lobes with a flat top. The simple leaf is arranged alternately on the twigs and has an entire margin. White ash. This is a compound leaf, a leaf that is made up of a number of leaflets. The correct technical term is pinnately compound, where the leaflets are arranged in two rows along a central axis. White ash has five to nine leaflets and has a total length of 12 inches with a conspicuous terminal leaflet. Each leaflet is ovate in shape broader at the base than at the apex. Each leaflet is finely serrated. The leaf arrangement is clearly opposite. Black locust is a forest-grown tree that's very durable and rot-resistant. The wood often is used for fence posts. Black locust is a compound leaf that is arranged on the twigs alternately. The seven to 11 leaflets are pinnately arranged on the main axis. They're about the size of a quarter and elliptical in shape. The leaflet's margins are entire and a dull green in color. Black locust is characteristic in having thorns on the branches. The thorns can be found at the point where the petiole joins the twig. Hickories consist of a large number of individuals. The wood of all the hickories have the same properties of being very hard and strong and are some of the best firewoods available in Kentucky's woodlands. Also, hickory is used for many implements that use handles, such as hammers that require resistance to shock. Hickory nuts also are very valuable for wildlife species. Hickories as a group are identified by their pinnately compound leaves that are arranged on the twigs in an alternating pattern. The leaflets number from five to 17 that are roughly oval in shape and finely serrated. The overall measurement of the leaf is approximately seven to 20 inches with a single terminal leaflet. Black walnut is one of Kentucky's single most valuable forest trees. The wood from the black walnut is highly sought around the world. 
The dark brown chocolate color of the wood is used throughout the furniture industry. Walnut is pinnately compound leaf. It is made up of 15 to 18 leaflets, which are about 3 inches long, making the total length of the leaf approximately 12 to 24 inches. The leaves are arranged in an alternating pattern on the twigs. Each leaflet is lanceolate in shape and is finely serrated. A terminal leaflet is absent in the black walnut. The Kentucky coffee tree is the official state tree of Kentucky. The leaves of the Kentucky coffee tree are compounded twice, referred to as bipinnately compound. Looking at a complete leaf, it looks like a compound leaf attached to a compound leaf. The total size of the leaf is 12 to 36 inches with each leaflet oval in shape and having an entire margin. A normal leaf is made up of 25 to 100 leaflets. The leaf is dull green in color. 